howdy there, shop machinists. If you're anything like me, when you get a project done, you just can't wait to see how it works. Oh, I do love this part of the project a lot. And so I put them together, jam them in the lathe, put in the collets. I just love this part of a job, but when it works like this, it's time for a tall cold one. And I just sit back and put my feet up and enjoy the project and kind of drift off and try to remember where it was that I first had the inspiration for this great project. And it wasn't there. Uh, no, 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 uh, no, no, that wasn't it. Oh, there it is. The collet pulling tube. I remember I wanted one of these things for the longest time, and I just happened to have a piece of steel tubing sitting in the scrap bin, rusting away, that I thought would make a good one. It's a lot like this one. In fact, it was from this very bar that I made that very part. How did I make that thing, though? This is crap. Well, I wrote it down, and after a lot of writing, I decided, uh, yeah, I can probably make this thing. But there's just a few problems with it. I mean, for one thing, the material. My goodness. I better... Uh, I better look at that pretty pretty good. Like how straight is that tubing? I made a little fixture, a couple of V-blocks, an arbor press, a little test indicator. And it turned out that tubing was not very straight. And in fact, it was about 60 thou, 50, 60 thou out. It was out of the range of the indicator. So, got my little press out, started pushing. Yeah, I'm sure somebody who did a lot of this could develop quite a feel for it, but it took me a little while to press the big bumps out. And then there was some short-term staticky looking stuff that I uh, wasn't quite sure what that was, but I got it as good as I could get it and decided that's good enough. And how round is that tubing? I said to myself, well, after a lot of coffee and having to go to the bathroom real bad, I deduced that it was about uh, maybe uh, 10 thou out. And that's way out around for something like this. How am I going to chuck that in the lathe? Like always, I sit back, put my feet up, get out a book, do a little bit of reading, a little bit of thinking. It works out pretty good for me, usually. Ah, here we go. Intersections of cones and spheres, circle. We kind of get a gimbal-y thing out of this that probably will work. Turn it between ball centers. Uh, should go something like this. Put the ball in the end, put the end in the socket. Now I got two cones that are working. Yeah, and just kind of finesse the other end. Oh, oh. Tool posts in the way. Uh, better move it back. Okay, it's supposed to work something like that. Better do some prep work. Uh, I left the tube sticking out about an inch and a half because I didn't want that ER collet to smash the rounds and deform the tube you know, the lobes on the tubes that would eventually affect the finish work that I was trying to put in there. A little bit of a cone. And, uh, you know, it's just a facing operation, so I'll speed it up, spare you the misery of, was, I hope, maybe I'll turn the sound off, because it sounds pretty bad. Uh, you know, and face it off, get it faced off, slip in a new tool, put in a little uh, 60 degree cone with that um, boring bar there off the top slide. Uh, I'm sure you've all done this a hundred times. 
It's all speeded up. I'm noticing that I don't put oil on to start out with. I'm wondering why that is. I really don't have an answer. It's the first time I've noticed it. Ah, there's a little oil. That'll probably smooth things out quite a bit. It's a miracle, I tell you. Now we're going to bore down that end of the tube um, about an inch or so because there's some work, a uh, little piece that'll have to go in there later. That thing that sounds like a woodpecker is the... is the um, weld bead on the inside of the tube that I'm knocking off. Kind of hard, kind of difficult to machine. I'm going to do something here in just about a second that I never want anybody... Oh, there it is. The lathe was still turning and I stuck my finger in there. Don't ever do that. So, I need a little plug on the inside of this tube because the drive dog puts a lot of pressure on the tube and I don't want to distort it. So I've Loctite a little plug in there. Ball fits in nice. Yeah, yeah, fits in nice. And uh, now the drive dog, I'm putting that on to line up with that plug. That drive dog puts a lot of force on it because it has to withstand a lot of force. And I don't want to smash the tube. Now the uh, drive socket that's in the head of the lathe, that's just a sleeve, is a little bit out, a couple of times. So I'm going to true that up, make sure that that runs really good. And again, I didn't put oil on this. Hmm. I must be slipping in my old age. Jumping around a little. Oh, maybe I'm on the inside of the tube there. So we'll run up and down the uh, side of the cone. Get it centered on there. Oh, that's pretty good. That's not much run out at all. Good. I'm going to try this again. Okay. Now that everything's been cleaned up, should be running tight, should be running true. I'll mount that up between the ball centers. And this is uh, old tried and true technique for some people, but uh, I rarely use it. Uh, you lash the drive dog to the face plate and that puts a z-axis force that jams that ball in there. Uh, you don't require the tailstock to be engaged to have that force hold that whole thing together. There's the other end. There's that ball spinning around there. I use a little uh, jog leg caliper to lay stuff out like this. I don't like to use my expensive tools to scratch. And I've lubricated that ball with uh, white lead. That is the best center lubricant you can possibly get. It really works nicely. It'll last the whole job without having to reapply. Um, we knew this um, tubing was pretty springy to start out with. So these are extremely light cuts. And in the end, it was about a 5,000 deep cut. Now this outside doesn't have to run true for the use as a collet puller, but it does have to run true for the machining operations that are going to be coming up here. So that ball, the cone that's running with that ball, is now very true to that, sur that uh, bearing surface. Now I have to uh, cut another bearing surface on this end that will be a part of the uh, will be a part of the collet pull tube. And man, I tried and tried, but I just had to run this thing really slow, lots of oil, sharp tool, to get even a reasonable finish. It just bounces around all over the place, but I finally got it. 
Now I'm going to do a threading operation. I've put my traveling steady on. I've extended the pawls out, if you look there, so that they're a little uh, closer behind the cutting tool, the threading tool. That turned out to work out quite well. Um, I couldn't put the tool closer to the pawls in their normal operating position because then the, um, the Aloris tool holder would have smashed into the rotating dog, so this worked out pretty good. And uh, I'm, I'm pretty slow, i got to admit, my reflexes aren't what they once were, but I've always done my threading at very, very slow speeds and had only a few crashes. This is uh, 3 quarter 20 thread. And I just checked it there. Always a good thing to do. And um, now we'll be uh, threading for a while. Yep, we're going to be threading any time now. There she goes. Pulling up a little fine thread there. Little chip. And for some reason, I'm not engaging the half nuts like I should, but uh, it eventually comes around and works out okay. I sped the filming up here just for everybody's benefit. I've noticed again that I have not put an oil on. Man. Okay, here we go. Pulling up a nice chip there. We'll just run this thing a few more times through, and when those threads have formed up pretty good, I better get a, a view as to, you know, how deep that thread's getting. I, I calculated beforehand what the measurement should be over the thread wires, and there's the calculation there. It should be 0.7612, measurement over wires. Um, I just like to run to standards and know where the thing is, so I put up my rig. Elastic band helps a lot. And that looks like 7615 there, which is close enough for me. Uh, wow, I'm sort of amazed. Worked out. So here's the next setup. Remember that uh, bearing surface that we put on there? Well, I'm putting my fixed steady out there. And I've put a piece of a um, paper bag between the pawls and the bearing, and that works great. Soak it with oil. I've used that quite a bit. Works great. Doesn't leave a mark. And I also use a little stop on internal threading so that I don't back the tool out into the other side. And then I put the feet on with the top slide, set it at the reverse 30 for the internal threads. It's a little shot from the upper side. I'm using a, a Bokum form tool there. Uh, for people who haven't used these things, I don't even know if they make them anymore, but they are super threading tools. Um, I got these in a box of tools for next to nothing, and I've used them for years and years. And uh, also have a little uh, dial over there that so that I know where I'm getting to. Although I've cut thread clearance on the inside so that I can uh, run the tool off the end and not, not crash into uncut material with a deep cut. Yeah, things are working pretty good so far. Not bad at all. Yeah, I better check it. Now, this is a hard inch collet. I bought these back in the day when they were $7 a piece. And if you ever want to get scared, go price them today. They're pretty expensive, but I, I've got some good collets here. And uh, this kind of brings me to the end of my video. My uh, There's my lathe, looking good. My old cat wants a walk. And if you like this video, share it. And thanks for watching. Bye now.